Hello, everyone. I'd like to wish everyone a happy, happy New Year. It's Happy New Year, not Happy St. Patrick's Day. You thought I was going to say maybe, but just because my father was Irish. But anyway, uh, how about Happy Sabbath also? So here we are, and I would like to reflect on last week, as Mr. Thomas was giving us the Bible study, he was telling us about prophecy and speaking in tongues. And it turned out that he was prophesying last week when he was thinking of me coming up here saying snap, crackle, pop to get up these <laughs> steps. But I made it. I might not get down, but I got up. So, and into the new message now, I was reflecting on in my youth coming into the church through my father and um, how the men wore suits and ties or coats and ties and all the women wore skirts and dresses. Men didn't come in without a tie and women didn't come in with pants. And I, I being a young person, I wasn't a suit and tie guy and I'm still not, but this is a, an issue that I've had and the week of February 19th, the 19th, 20, 21, 22, those four days, I don't remember which, my brother Tim and I were sitting around and we were talking, and uh, he was telling me that I had a bad attitude, and I was, I was agreeing with him 100%, <laughs> and it, it was about the suit and tie thing, and I thought, ah, da, 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 but, and after going through that, the very next day, God opened my eyes, and I'll explain that later. But the, the title to the sermon that is, The Life You Save May Be Your Own. Now, I'd like to know, possibly a show of hands, has anyone in here saved anyone else's life? All right, that's beautiful. Anyway, I would like to tell a little bit about my past and the very first person's life I saved was my other brother, Jim, who's here also. We were visiting my father's parents down in Kentucky, and they lived like on a farm, and there was no other houses around, no street lights down the street or anything. So my father's philosophy, his, I guess we'll just go with that one, uh, was the night before we would leave for a trip, we would load the car up. So then the next morning, we would just get in the car and drive away. So it's evening. We're loading the car up. My brother's about four years old. I'm around 14, 15. And um, there was possibly just one more thing that had to go out to the car. So I picked it up, and I'm walking out to the car. I looked over to my right, and I saw something I've never seen before. I saw a dog crawling on its belly and it was like next to the woods but in the grass also and the dog is crawling on its belly and I'm thinking what is that so I looked and by the car a, a distance away from me I saw my little brother Jim out there by the car and I, as I'm watching the dog started crawling faster towards him and I'm thinking this dog's going to attack my brother so I took off running and I grabbed my brother and lifted him to the side. And just as I lifted him out of the way, the dog flew through the air. It was a close race, and I, I won. But, but the dog just, just flew right past me in, in the air and kept going. So a few years later, Worldwide Church of God established the Cleveland Church. And we were off West 140th in Lorraine in that neighborhood at a school. And I would drive myself. And uh, I was, after services, I'm walking out to my car, and I'm in the school parking lot. And there's no other people around, so I thought. And I saw another dog crawling on its belly. But I knew what was going on, and I looked. And some of you might remember Guy Massey. Well, he had a little daughter back then, and she was four or five, whatever, and the dog was coming after her. Well, 
This time I just ran at the dog and started screaming and the dog kept going and, and left her. And I, I saved her from being dog food. So a few years later, I'm at a little party and I came out of the bathroom and I turned off the light and just then I heard <laughs> Now I'm in the dark and I'm thinking, uh oh, what is this? I didn't know what it was. And I didn't know what to do. So again, <laughs> now I'm pretty freaked out because back around 1975, some of you might remember there was a movie where a little girl would spin her head around completely <laughs> and then she would, she would throw up this green vial and it was called The Exorcist. Now I never went to see it because I was afraid of the devil. Anyway, I turned on the light and I seen a young woman laying on the bed in the bedroom and she was passed out and she was throwing up and it was coming right back into her throat like that John Bottom, the rock and roll guy who died that way. I seen this woman was gonna die too because it was just coming up and going and she couldn't breathe. So I picked her up, brought her into the shower and turned the cold shower on and brought her back and revived her and I figured it's better if you're all wet with your clothes in cold water than to be dead. So the next few years goes by, I'm sitting in the bar and I'm drinking some beers after work. And behind me was these little islands, they call them, where you put stools around and socialize. And I'm sitting there and I hear a loud crash, the metal chair hitting the ground. So I turned around and looked. And there was a man who had fell off of his stool slammed his head on the wall, and he was unconscious on the ground. And I looked at this man, and he was not well-liked at all. And there was only one person that I know of that would come in the bar that cared for this man at all. Everyone else disliked him. Now, unfortunately, back then, now I've changed, but I turned around, and I knew in my heart that I can revive this man and bring him back to life. And I just turned around and started drinking my beer some more because I didn't like the man and I was going to let him die. So it, fortunately for him and for me, that the only person that cared for this man was his son. And I got along well with his son. And his son was there that, that afternoon. And somebody called him and he came out. And like I said, I'm sitting right directly by this man. And I seen the concern and the worry and the care that this Roy had for his dad. So because of the son being there, I got off my stool. I walked up to the man and grabbed him by his arm. And I got real close to his ear. And I says, wake up, wake up. You can't sleep here. Wake up! And the man woke up, and he was revived. He was definitely going into a coma, possibly going to die. So I went back, and I sat there drinking my beer. They escorted him outside. I finished my beer. I'm leaving. And in the first parking spot was the chair the son had, I mean, the parking car. And I seen about four guys standing around the car, and I walked up to him and I says to the son, how is he doing? And instantly that man recognized my voice as the one that woke him up. And he was grateful, thanking me, thanking me, thanking me. So I moved away and a couple years later I went back to the bar for a couple more beers. And the son was there and I says, oh, how's your dad? He says, oh, my dad's dead, someone stabbed him to death. So that just reflected on how nobody liked the man. Somebody did kill him, even though I, God used me to bring him back alive. So as the church broke up and I stayed with the Worldwide Church of God, and then they started celebrating Christmas, so I left them. 
and I started going to other churches. And back where we used to go in Broadview on 77 and Wallings Road, we used to go down to the school, but right there is another church, a mega church I started attending. And uh, I would go to the 815 services and they would have coffee for us. So I would get a coffee and I would go outside and watch the people come in and drink my coffee and get ready for church services. And one day as I'm standing on the steps, watching over everything, like kind of like this where you can see everything, um, a cargo van pulled up to let someone out so they can just walk up the steps rather than come through the parking lot. And uh, the person got out and I'm looking and the driver was close to parallel with me. And rather than drive around and then back into the lot and find a spot, he decided to back up and cut right through the, the driveway there. And being it was a cargo van, there was no windows in the back doors, so he had to depend on the two side, uh, side mirrors. So I watched him as he looked to his left in the mirror, he seen no one coming. So then he looked to his right and seen no one coming. But in the time it took him from looking to the left to the right, two people, two women, had came out of the parking lot and were crossing the street. And he didn't look back in the mirrors. He accelerated very fast. And I had seen the women were right behind the van then. So I shouted out, ho, ho, ho! And he slammed on the brakes. No, I wasn't practicing to be Santa Claus. <laughs> But he slammed on the brakes and just missed running over these two women by approximately one to two feet. And I, they might not have died, but they definitely would have got hurt because he wasn't just putzing back, he was jamming. So later in life, my shop moved out to Cuyahoga Falls and uh, I would go visit Ernest Ainley's Cathedral Buffet. <laughs> <laughs> and because for $8.50, I got a whole buffet with beverages and desserts. You go to McDonald's and you can't get that for $8. So I would make a habit of this. And One day I said to myself, you know what? You're getting a little bit too fat around the middle, Glenn. No desserts. So I, I said, okay. So after I would eat, I would go to the coffee section, get a coffee, go into the room where all the desserts were, get three or four bowls of soft serve ice cream and one or two pieces of cake. That's why I was getting a little thick in the middle, plus all the real food I ate. So I said, okay, now I'm gonna, no dessert, just get the coffee and then go back to work. So I, instead of going this way to get the coffee, I came out here, came over here and I, I was gonna avoid the temptation and just went in a big loop around to get to the coffee. Can you imagine what happened? There was an arrow where the coffee used to be pointing to the other side of the room saying coffee. So where did I go? I have to go right past the dessert room. As I'm going that way, I hear a spiritual voice tell me, Go in and look, it won't hurt. Go in and look. <laughs> I yielded to the temptation. But what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. So as I get into the room where the desserts are, there's a nice long counter, and there was people all in front, so I had to wait my turn just to look. And uh, an old, old woman had got her dessert, and she's turning to walk back into the eating cafeteria section, and as she started to turn, her ankle gave away, and I seen her just falling, free falling. I stepped up one step, she fell right into my chest, I wrapped my arms around her, and held her up till she got her balance and everything, and I walked her to her table, she told me, Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm 91 years old. And she was real thin, and when you get that old, your 
like Mr. Scrapper was telling us, you're afraid of breaking your hip and falling down. This woman, from my observing, was just going to slam her head into the wall, I mean to the floor, because as, pr fail, as frail as she was, her arms wouldn't have saved her. She would have just slammed, and I don't know if she would have died or not, but that's the last person on the street I saved. Now, I think I did one more. As my brother and I, now back to this part, as my brother and I were talking about wearing the tie and everything and me having a bad attitude, the very next day, as I opened my Bible to continue my study of the morning, I was in Matthew 22, and I read a scripture there, but before we go there, I would like to turn, because after I got to the Matthew 22, I did a little more probing, and I came up with Revelation 19, and it starts in 6 and goes down to uh, number 9. It says, Hallelujah, the Master reigns, our God, sovereign, strong. Let us celebrate, let us rejoice, let us give him the glory. The marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife has made herself ready. She was given a bridal gown of bright and shining linen. The linen is the righteousness of the saints. The angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb. So here we are, we're here and we're blessed. But now back to the original scripture that opened my eyes was in Matthew 22, and it starts with the story of the wedding banquet. And it tells, I'll just start by telling you stuff. Um, it says, the stories of the kingdom of God, it's like the king who threw a wedding banquet for his son. And all the people said they would come, they would come, and then when the time came, he sent his servants out to tell him, come on, come on, let's go to the, to the wedding supper. And they all came up with excuses. Oh, no, I got to check my field out. Oh, no, I got to do this. Oh, no, I can't come. No, no, no. So the king got pretty upset, and he sent his servants out to the streets and says, gather anybody. Fill this place up with people for this wedding supper of my son. And as they did that, and the king came in, uh, I, I'm going to give you this out of two versions. One is the message, and the other one is the international version. And it says, when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He said, friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? Man was speechless. The king says to his attendants, bind him up, hand and foot, throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. So in the message it says, the king said, there was a, uh, he spotted a man who wasn't properly dressed. He said to him, friend, how dare you come in here looking like that? Hmm. And the king told his servants, get him out of here fast. Tie him up and ship him to hell. And make sure he doesn't get back in here. That's what I mean when it says many are invited and only a few make it. So, after having this conversation with my brother, and the very next day having this conversation with God, I started wearing my suit and tie for the last four Sabbaths. <laughs> and I don't want to get thrown into outer darkness, and the life you save may be your own. Thank you.